I think what's going to happen here is they're paying attention to this Strife shit. And they're releasing things that are kind of like Strife's. But you also have to remember, you the Nerf, the NIC is not driving sales of Nerf as much as we think it is. Yeah, there's the demand for the 10,000 people, 5,000 people, however many people play HVZ. But it's kids. It's kids' birthdays. And they don't give a shit about Strife's. So maybe they will get rare. But I think once it gets to that weird kind of niche thing where they sell for $40, they're going to release another one. And it'll be like pink or some shit. So that sucks. I'm into it. I want a pink one. <laughs> oh, I just hate stripes. They're just so boring. It's been done, man. Like, yeah. I'm, it's an arms race that has been worn every, every blast here that's like electric that's come out in the past few years is a stripe reshell or a rapid stripe reshell. Or, except for the Hyperfire. The Hyperfire is cool. The, I like that. Yeah. yeah uh, it's got a whole new like propulsion mech, and it's really cool. It's still, the, it's still flywheels. What but. about that new one that just came out with uh, the select fire? What was that one called? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't even know anything about that. What are you talking it's about? The, uh, there's a three round burst, the kind of thing. Yeah, there, there's one that's select fire. You can go sales. Oh, is it on the modulus line? It's yeah. a modulus, yeah. yeah. It's, yeah, it's, it's expensive, though, man. Yeah. yeah, it's, it's going to be like, broke right I think now. like 65, yeah. 70 bucks. So, like, I mean, it's cool. I mean, but you could also do that yourself with like modding stuff as well. I mean, mm -hmm. I think. Uh, or just trigger this one. Yeah. That, that too. Yeah. Um, I think uh, MTB did that. They did, they did a segment on when they were making their super strives. They made like one that was select fire. I have a hard time single firing my uh, my hyper fire because it doesn't have a uh, motor braking on it. That's how directional original Zeus was, and like exactly what you're saying. Like you don't really need select fire. But well, the Zeus was single fire or something out of. Yeah, but when he turned it up and put all that stuff through there, he yeah. made a full auto Zeus, and other people did it too. Um, all you have to do is tap the trigger, and then it was two three balls. And so like this idea that you need a three round burst mechanism that's gonna they you're, just you're adding 35 40 dollars onto it just so you can say you got a three-round birth i don't think it applies to the hvz community very much i think it's neat um i don't think it hasn't it's just i don't think it's been I, so I think well. that there are other games where it would like work out pretty well like some like people on the west coast I, I i've been kind of investigating what's going on over there i want to get into this thing called afterworlds where like select fire and what you're shooting and all it's it's a little bit of a larp and it, it's very fallouty and that's how they want to play nerf out there and i'm kind of on board for it but like the select fire could very well come in handy there you know where i think it is uh, i'm gonna play devil's advocate it's call of duty man i think it's yep. that three arm burst it's the famas it's that uh what was the other one like yeah, the m16 m16 yeah. yeah every game's got a three round burst a type 95 i like to check them i think that's burst one. let's talk about that how much do you like let's talk about video games influencing uh nerf because it's when I start, first started playing Nerf, I was playing a ton of Halo, and it was real life Halo. Oh yeah, um, with Boomco coming yeah. out with their Halo stuff, yeah. I absolutely loved it. Like literally, when uh, I first saw Drek, uh, like uh, putting out his video of the uh, the Halo Boomco line, I kind of was kind of a little dick and just like messaged Drek, like, "Hey, you got you got one of those left? Because I can't find them, and I want one." All and right. He's like, no. Nope. I got a disclosure. Uh, and it's been long enough where it's, I don't think it's going to happen. Uh, so when I went down to, I think I just had like a layover. I had, had two speaking engagements, had a little time in, in between. Uh, for, I was in Atlanta for a layover, so I went and stayed with Drac and Draculina and went and hung out with Bobo and Chicken. And um, part, Nam was there too. Part of what we did, I did was I mailed Drac three Ravens and uh, two, there's these things called Busby Plasma Blasters. And so this is in the time where there wasn't the, the Boomco stuff. Um, the the assault rifle and the the Busby plasma blaster looks exactly like the Halo blaster. Doesn't fire anything. It's just, but it's. I think they even got sued over it. So it was a very rare thing. I got mine at a, at a flea market, and I I found a way to get more of them. But they're worth about a hundred dollars, and I think they'll probably be worth less now that there is that boom co option. So I sent him two of those and then um, three ravens and we formulated a plan to kind of cut them down. And so basically, me, Nam, and uh, Nam and Bobo. We, we made two uh, assault rifles, the Halo assault rifles, that were a Raven base with the plasma blaster over top. It was an integration. And uh, we got it like about maybe 75% of the way done. We were going to put an ammo counter on there and everything. And it was like, we were, I was really excited about it. And when I left Atlanta, like, dude, Drax busy as fuck. Like, I'm a busy guy and Drax 10 times busier than me. I left it. Uh, they were all together. I might even put the picture of that for the, um, for the icon. Um, but we, I kind of left it with Drac, and I was just kind of like waiting for him to have time to finish those up because it was going to like blow people away. And it was like, dude, I was really excited about it. And uh, dude, it's probably just sitting on a shelf. Uh, and now it's like we've got the Halo, the Boomco stuff. 
And uh, that was cool. It wouldn't, even when the Boomco stuff came out, it would have been relevant because it was a nerf that was like functional with that. But mm -hmm. I don't know, Drag, if you're watching this, I don't know why you would be because it's long and you're busy. Man, give me my Ravens back or finish that shit. Or just send it to me and I'll figure it out. Me and, me and Sammy will figure it out. But yeah, give my Ravens back and more. We'll shoot tampons. <laughs> but anyway, I, I get it, you know, but uh, so that was cool. All right, what's, what other directions? I want to talk more about you. I want to talk about, um, so we've kind of talked about where we've been with the last few years building Thunderdome and kind of, you know, you, get, they, you said you're going up to Oregon to do this stuff. I want to talk about uh, the subject of uh, people being in your life and then them leaving. Because uh, yep. especially with Nerf, like you get really sucked into people and there's almost like this element of you get to be family really, really quick and in college, and in Nerf, people disappear on you. Like they drop out of college or they finish college. And uh, especially if you're like a long time player HVZ, you're gonna have people in your life that are just like, you can't imagine living without them. And then they're just gonna disappear because they move. Yep. Um, first one for me was Cameron and it was just like, same. Yeah. broke my fucking heart. Like it's, I'm not the same person without that dude in my life and I can't, it hurts me to think about it. And now like Darren, I've known Darren's been moving. Like when did you find out about your master stuff? I got accepted in like December. No, well. I guess February is when I, I knew for sure, like, oh, I guess it's time to start saving. Yeah, and so Darren's like, oh, I'm moving to Oregon, and I'm just like, I ain't even dealing with that until the day <laughs> yeah. he's leaving. That doesn't exist. Yeah. Because it, I'm, I I don't know how I'm going to handle this. I really don't. And uh, that's that's why today we're doing this little thing, because this is how I want to say goodbye to Darren. I want to talk about how awesome it's been with him, and rather than crying about him being gone. But you're also, he's got a great girlfriend, and her name's Josie. Mm -hmm. And uh, they've been dating for about a year? Almost two, two years. Almost two months, years. Yeah. And, uh, He's moving away. Uh, ch talk about that, because I'm... Well, yeah. uh, it sucks. <laughs> a little Bobby. bit. Uh, I haven't ever had a successful long-distance relationship. Uh, we'll see how this one goes. We're both, like, being pretty real about it. Um, and, uh, I don't know, like, we're, we both have, like, frequent flyer, uh, like, credit cards. So we're going to try to score as many free plane tickets as possible. How often are you shooting? Like, what's your goal to be able to see each other? Uh, I... How much more she got left? She's got like uh... she's got a year left, yeah, and then and then we could be real adults together. Um, yeah, it's gonna suck, and we're, we'll try to figure it out as we go. But right now, I'm just like I'm looking into things that like we could do together when she comes and sees me. Uh, and I'll probably be back here at least once a year, maybe twice a year, because I have family here too. Yeah, and my mom lives here. You my got grandma. The room, man. Yeah. Um, yeah, just kind of looking into things to do together right now. I think we talked about it early in the beginning like it so it's not going to be real to you until like when is it gonna, like are you it'll probably be real to me when i'm like passing through kansas city to get onto like highway 80 or something even like uh when we were talking the other day and like uh jim tupper was like oh I, you know i i have the nerf thing you guys started talking yeah. up there how uh, how much is that making this kind of sting of leaving to know that you probably gonna run oh, into nerf man, and you dude, I... the nerf group Okay, so I was I was pretty excited to like get into a new nerf group. I like people in general. Uh, I'm an anthropologist. Um, but uh, what what kind of kicked me right in the face was um, I'm already part of the, uh, the like the nerf Facebook group for Oregon State University, and it kind of broke my heart to see that uh, their winter game had gotten canceled. Um, just they didn't have enough, enough participation. And to be fair, weather in Oregon freaking sucks. I'm probably gonna I'm probably gonna get involved and try to bump their numbers a little bit. Um, just do what I can to help out. Uh, but in general, they're a little bit less involved than like LAS is, but we also have like one of the most active groups in the country. So I don't know, it's it's gonna be a change of scenery for sure. Man, I wanna play a Penn State game. <laughs> it's Me just, too, yeah. I, I see what they do. They, it's... I like to see like all the uh, dude. I love the NVZ because we got to talk about. I didn't get to really hang out with people. I know, that much. yeah, it sucked. That's why I keep getting all these ideas for trolling Tony and Enwar, where I'm just like, you know what? The most important thing is to meet everybody and hang out with everybody. I'm gonna do some fun stuff, but uh, dude, that's uh, people are the priority for once again, you know. All right, talk more about um. So you leaving? Hi, John. In about 16, 17 hours. He was my other, this is John, he's my other cohort for the King of the Hill. We slaughtered, it was great. It was pretty great. All right, I'm gonna give you this chair and I'm gonna go on the ground. Here you go. This is John, the point man. Hello. And we're gonna go get Thai food, so we're gonna talk for a couple minutes. Basically, we're just kinda, how am I gonna get this? Um, we're talking just about the last few years and really like the road that we've been on and this ain't gonna work. Give me that other chair. Oh, that ain't gonna work at all, is it? <laughs> you got a bucket? Yeah, man. Sammy, find me a bucket. I'll catch John up. So, 
or just give me hey give me that um that long lounging trip just anything we're talking about just kind of the crazy road we've been on for the past five years and just like it's i think we've all been living the thunderdome nerf life for so long that it's not weird to us anymore yeah. and with darren leaving i'm just like um i've been reflecting a lot on the on the past few years and just like it's, it's just like like finally realizing again how crazy this this path that we've been on we've been yeah it's uh it's been a road you know i uh where i'm from this the first place, that so. all of that doesn't exist you know we go play paintball but we play with the army guys and you know it's it's normal paintball is accepted kind of in the the world at large uh you know and then you know it's hard to play paintball within city limits um so you know come here and when i first came here you know i was about the only one from my graduating class to come here and so i didn't have, know anybody i didn't have any really friends and so I was in the dorm. Wait, you have friends now? I know, right? <laughs> uh, I was in the dorm by myself all day, right? And then I, I met these weirdos who like to handle Nerf guns and chase after each other across campus and jump through bushes and jump off. Don't jump off things. Don't jump off things. But they, we would back then, you know? <laughs> and God, God. this is the, the cowboy days of Nerf on Missouri State's yeah. campus. And when you could do dumb shit and no one would say anything, really, at least not to us, uh, we find out they say thanks to public security. Um, but, you know, you meet all these weird motherfuckers, right? Weird people, like people just from every walk of life, every religion, every gender orientation, every sexual orientation, just doing whatever. And then you realize that you're weird. You're fucking weird too, right? You, that, you, that you find this weird, but not weird enough that you don't want to do it. We make weird normal, and I think that's what's so different it's about so us, you know? It's so strange, right? And you see these... I, I work... At the school, and I work with freshmen, you know, I, I run a store table, and I see all these incoming freshmen. So, Nerf is probably the last thing on their mind, you know? It's yeah. like how we made it, like, normal is, like, the abnormal. I can't say that word. Normal. Abnormality it, is the new normal for yeah. us. Like, you think it's like, weird when someone doesn't do Like, weird, weird is just the norm for us. Like, oh, he, he likes doing D&D. &D. Oh, he, mm -hmm. he, he, he's... Yeah, yeah, you, you know it's what I mean. It's a bunch of different kinds of nerds. Like, I hate anime. I think it's dumb, except, like, the what's the guy, the, the Spirit Away, like... Oh, he's he is yeah, that, that guy's all right. That's, the rest of it's just Dragon Ball Z yelling. But, I mean, I'm dorky <laughs> as fuck. I'm dorky as fuck in so many different ways, like video games and stuff. But I don't like tabletop games. And it's we all kind of come together and, like, we'll razz each other. Like, oh, yeah, Dragon Ball Z. But uh, we kind of just accept each other's weirdness, you know? And it's weird when you see someone who isn't, you know what weird you know i mean they're sports. weird everyone's weird in their own fucking way yeah, right like there's two normal people that play with us yeah like the, the sports guy good. like uh, ryan yeah. murder pigeon yeah like we have all these people and then we start to realize that it's not just a community of weirdos even though we it's are just all a community kind of, of weirdos it's just a people yeah you know we have people Very who accepting who, right. who love to go play sports ball and go to chiefs games and you know go to concerts and they do all this kind of stuff and then we have people who sit around on a a dining table on Tuesdays and roll dice at each other, you know? And it, it's, it's, everyone's weird and it's this, it's, we've gone from this, we're weird and that we're different and then we're weird, but so are you. Yeah. And so are you. And you can be. And you can be as weird and you can be the same kind of weird and enjoy this weirdness or you can't and that's fine too. Just do your thing and just let other people do their thing too. I think there's like a desire in people, or people are just weird and they're really quiet about it. Even like, you know, I came from St. Louis and when we were growing up, it was preppies versus kind of like the, the metal head. It's just like that line of just uh, where you either had to be prim and proper and that like you weren't allowed to be weird in that kind of preppy line. And I think uh, everyone's got that weird thing and they got their own weirdness. My sister collects Care Bears, I collect video games. And I think the more we kind of shut that down and like people kind of hide their weirdness, I think everyone's got, they want to let their weirdness out and you kind of, once you get into that safe it's space where... Like it's a shell, basically. Like, people... It's a persona. Like, people don't feel comfortable until they're actually just, like, once they, like, get to know the person, they're like, all right, I'm going to test the water. I'm going to let out some of my weirdness here. And then once you just see that, like, their weirdness matches your weirdness or their weirdness is over-escalating or yours is just over 9,000. Yeah. And, and people are just accepting here. And like, it doesn't matter if you ship purple and taste like rainbows. That's We're going to accept That'd be you. Weird. Down with people shoes. who taste like rainbows. Anyway, and Darren kind of hit on it, even though his was kind of a joke, this like, idea of a persona, is that we're all really constrained by what society expects of us and what we kind of expect from each other and of ourselves. And then you start getting these weirdos who kind of say, no, that's not who I am, Rob. You don't want to work a 9 to 5. 
middle management somewhere in a suit and tie. Yeah. You want to build houses and play with Nerf guns and video games and shit, and that's fine. Yeah. And uh, another person who lives, you know, off of one of the great neighborhoods here in Springfield and Walnut Lawn or whatever, and be like, that that man is a child. And it's, no, he's he's Rob. You let Rob do Rob, and you don't judge screw you for thinking that he isn't any less of a human being than you. You know. I think. I, I was talking with someone and they're talking about Springfield. It's this weird mix of like rural and like city together. Yep. Like it's got this like a little bit of Confederate to it, but it's uh, it's a rebel city of kind of just like no fuck you. Like, and I think that's I think that's why it works here. Thunderdome is just kind of like we have a oddly large, like, n not to like get political about it, yeah. but uh, like it, it's a weird town for a lot of reasons. Like you're saying, like the the rural urban uh, like conflicts. Yeah, like it's very fucking real here. The next largest city is Kansas City, 300 miles away. Yeah. Mm, okay. No, it ain't that far. Okay. Yeah, it's, we're all, it's really it's two far hours away. It's about two hours away, yeah. So, 200 miles away. Like, <laughs> two hours That away. is not to equate to 100 miles away. I mean, I is, drive St. Louis is two and a half hours away, and Kansas City is about, about two. Anyways, everything between Springfield and those two cities is bumfucked Egypt. Like, it's, it, it's true. Yeah, I'm Egypt. from bumfucked yeah, bump there's, nowhere, there's you know? Here. So, like, this is the like, smallest of the three big cities in Missouri. But, but uh, it's still a big city. I we're defined by our colleges. Yeah. It's a bubble of progressive in a, like a sea of just. Go yeah, we're in a, we're a conservative city voting wise, mm -hmm. uh, but we have you know a, a shit ton in the middle of the city of colleges, and therefore a a, a, a big centrally located group of liberals. Yep. Uh, and it, it works, which is the weird part. I mean, we have we have like this squabbles along political lines, but it's never in my experience has never been outright like venomous we don't have like we have protests and stuff but you know, what city doesn't really but like i like it's that never people talk terrible. to people here like yeah. really, like in here i'm not gonna bring up race we've got an issue with racism down here okay. so a lot Missouri. of this is like a bunch this is four white dudes on a porch going hey everyone really is really friendly and i think the black experience is it's different. I think we can just acknowledge that it's different in this city than white people's experience. And so I think, as a as a weird white dude, I get I get to kind of be that. And I think it's it's a good place to live. But man, we got some fucking problems with um, just like even just the gay thing. Like it's, it's yeah. we every it's kind of a constant back and forth and back and forth. And I feel like the 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 conservative like. Um, old school it's kind of losing and i think people are kind of flailing and just like no don't change don't change don't change and we're constantly kind of progressing forward but then we did just like hey no we need to take two steps back and uh, i think that's what's holding springfield back i think it's a really great place i just love that people talk to each other no one talks to their neighbors in st louis it's just like they're living in their own yeah. little worlds my uh, girlfriend's parents I, in st louis they don't they, they talk to their neighbors but they don't know the people who live across the street from them yeah. at all it's I, like I, yeah those are those guys i well, think like, i think some of those pressures kind of help build LES. You know, like, talk, talking about, like, the diversity of Missouri, like, depending on where you grew up. Like, I grew up in Salem, Missouri. It was, like, a town of maybe now 5,000 people. It's, it's bumfuck nowhere, yeah, too. Yeah, but, like, growing up there, like, I, I'm half Palestinian. I'm, I'm, my dad was full-fledged from the Middle East, from Israel. And, like, knowing there, everybody knew that we were we were a different race. Like, like, all my siblings were half-breeds. And, like, right around 9-11, everything was getting weird. People were just like, ugh these people yeah. yeah and but like when, when i moved down here i was like i was afraid because like all my friends back in salem they were, they were making funny race jokes and like ah yeah derogatory name derogatory name i'm not gonna say them because it's funny until it's just not funny which is really yeah. fucking quick and, like, uh, yeah when i got down here to springfield I, I never really had that problem i mean i kind of i kind of still look pretty white just like the beard is just like i'm i'm gonna tell you a little secret white people's completely fucking made up and yep. we we don't need to go down that road because i'll go yeah. on a, a tirade but the idea that uh you know Sam, the idea that sammy's like oh he's a he's different like look at him he's he's white people he's white tan white he's tan white person who, who gets to be white people the mexicans get to be, it's, it's just it's fucking stupid it's people are people we all got about the same kind of like desires out of life we want to be happy we appreciate our frame family and friends and uh I think Nerf kind of just cuts through all that shit. Yeah, I agree. Like, it, like I said earlier, it doesn't matter if you're purple, yeah. black, or taste like. Rainbows. I don't know. I don't know what those people taste like. Rainbows, man. I don't trust them. You shoot a guy in the face with a Nerf gun, you're friends. You yeah, know? And, exactly. And that for that person may have different religious beliefs than you. They might have different. They're a different skin color than you. They're different ethnicity. They're they're different politically. It doesn't matter. Like, I, I'm a, I'm a liberal. Uh, obviously long hair you know uh i'm, I'm white you know I'm white norwegian. people I'm, I'm white people i'm norwegian i'm straight 
uh, you know, cisgender, that whole nine yards. You have and all I'm, the privilege. And I live with three bisexual people, uh, all different religions. Uh, one of religion, uh, one of our uh, roommates is a Jewish Lutheran, who's bisexual, so it's it's a clusterfuck and there. Female. And we met her through Nerf, and would would up hang out with this person without Nerf? You know, probably not. It's not within my comfort zone of what I identify as, true, you know? You know what I really like, and I'm really like, kind of gives me hope for the future, is the new kind of young, groovy Christian who's just like, yeah. cool hanging out gay people, doesn't give a shit. Yeah. And, uh, and you see more of them, and they're just like, they're just, they don't want to be a part of all that hate and I, shit. Yeah. And uh, I feel like it's a lot of like the old white the, hairs. The relationship with Jesus guys, like they're cool. I mean, I'm an atheist, and I think those guys are cool. Yeah, well, Shelby. <laughs> I'm really yeah, Shelby's a Christian. Shelby, yeah, Shelby's our, a Christian, our friend, uh, and what do you, what do you he's fucking the late, most laid back dude I've Shlubby. ever met. He's and like, we don't fuck with him. We don't. Too, we yeah. don't like you know. Sometimes we make religious jokes and stuff, and sometimes it's funny. But like, I think we make a point of not fucking with people. Yeah, I used to be an and asshole. Janine too. Age. Janine's like super Christian. We're like, yeah, she's like the nicest. One of our best friends. Yeah, is super Christian, and Darren and are are atheists. Yeah, we're super chill with each other. And there's no, we we joke. Oh yeah, you're going to hell, and sometimes. Yeah, he comes off with here's some shit. religious really shame <laughs> and it's fine we're not yeah. mad at each other we're we're yeah. friends we hang out we used to hang out every we, single sunday mostly the jokes stem from acknowledging the stereotype yeah you know and and like th that's the that those are the kind of jokes that are okay like making jokes based on the acknowledgement of a stereotype is, is how quote-unquote racist prejudice jokes are okay like if, if you're making a joke and it's not acknowledging a stereotype well, sometimes even just up. talking about it, like, yeah. you can joke about, like, there is culture, and you're allowed to talk about culture, and I feel like if you kind of, if you're, be, like, interacting with people of other cultures, and you're kind of like, I, there's some kind of a degree of, of uh, that you're being a part of that almost in a weird way, but when uh, you're talking about yelling terrorists and stuff and fucking with you, like, there's, yeah, it's not fucking funny, yeah. it's not, it's... I like talking to your dad and like and I hear about stuff and I like when you come back from Israel I like to hear about that that mm -hmm. different world like that I'm kind of like afraid of Israel because oh no crazy shit happens there and dude I I, uh, I hitchhiked through East St. Louis uh, with that movie and shit and Ugh. it's pretty pretty chill like yeah shit will happen but uh most places are more chill than you think it's just yeah. like certain it's like how it is here like there's certain places that like if you're a certain color they're not really accepting it's just like, while you're over there, there's certain places that, if you're yeah. a certain ethnicity, they're not really that accepting, and it's going to cause a lot of conflict. But there's still people. I had a yeah. buddy who, who went to Egypt right after I graduated high school, and I graduated high school in 2011, so this is the middle of the Egyptian summer, right? The Egyptian revolution is happening. He's in Cairo. He's a scared, scrawny, 18-year-old white kid, <laughs> and he has never been outside of the States before, and this is his first experience, and he lived there for three months unaccosted, didn't get messed with, wandered around Cairo, you know, free, free as a snake. bird. Yeah. And uh, completely right. fine. And the stories he tells is amazing because you would think in the, A, in the Middle East, he's a white American, okay? And B, in the middle of the Egyptian revolution, which is the, the chaotic time, of course, and he did not once get in, in any sort of trouble with anyone, not with the military police, not with the, the normal police, not with any, like, people who live in the city, nothing. And then you hear the story of, oh, Israel and Egypt is a dangerous place. And See, that's yeah, just, I'm sure it is, just but a like, really it's not. a shitty stereotype, people that have no like culture here. Like they, they, they've never traveled anywhere outside their hometown, which is sad. I mean, I understand people are poor and they can't afford trips yeah. like that, but educate yourself a little bit. You don't know what what's going on in there. Yeah. You don't know exactly what's going on. Like. I've been fortunate enough with my, my father like taking me there to visit my family there. I, I've, I've learned things there like yeah like pe there, there are some really shitty areas like Gaza but like we, we don't really go near there but like places where I stay like my grandparents they live in a community called Doha and it's like a little community five minutes outside of uh, Bethlehem right outside of Nativity Square where you can see supposedly where Chich was, or Christ was born but like over there there's nothing like at, from times you'll hear a few gunshots going off, but that's because the Israelis. I'm not, I'm not gonna go on that. It's a whole nother subject. Yeah. I'll rant on about that. <laughs> yeah, I gotta be like that too. It's cool. And like, but it's more, much more chill than it, what it, you fucking think. Yeah. Like yeah. people are caring. They're they're regular they're fuck, not nine to five Joe schmoes. Like they're 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 trying to make a living from them and trying to make yeah. a better man. They're their just life. fucking people. Yeah. And I think that's where we get a lot of this problem of today is like all like no one's really 
be like hateful and, and like angry just on their own. All this stems from a, a lack of knowledge, a lack of, not, not necessarily education, obviously college or whatever isn't for everyone, but just a lack of like understanding that these aren't different, these aren't the other, they're just like you, they just happen to have a little more melanin in make, your skin. Uh, oh yeah, it's completely natural for the, the fear of the other, it's a big human, human part of the human process. Hashtag we're apes. But I think Nerf almost flips it on its ass. Exactly. Because you, you don't deal with the getting to know people first, you already like them and then you're like, oh wow, I guess you're gay. Oh, I'm really Christian. Like, like, you're already you friends. Have a, you have a shared interest. Like you guys like Nerf, and it shouldn't even matter if you're gay or or you're straight you or you or you. Of gay people, that's the only problem. Or you really like porcupines. It shouldn't matter. Yeah. When people are really just like not okay with the gay thing, like Evan B. Who did the guy out of fuck? Like, cause the, a guy got to the point where he was just like, no, I think uh, trans and gay is wrong. And uh, Evan's like. There's no place for the shit. You're gone. Like yeah. that's this is just something we're all passionate about. Cause that's, man, okay. So let, let, let's like talk about that. I, I think I I think our community is kind of weird, or like awesome in that. But I I've also noticed that uh, Nerf in general is a a little bit trolly and like sometimes a little bit toxic on the internet. But also at the same time tends to be like really accepting. And I see can get pretty bad, but they're yeah. also all really accepting of their their badness and everyone else you know? yeah like i i wonder what it is about nerf that like we all been picked on man i think that's I, I, th I, th it, I think i think i think you're right yeah, I, th we were I think all it's picked on school, I guarantee it. yeah oh, I used to be you were picked on for being a different skin color i was picked darren on and i picked on for being skinny little metal heads rob i assume you about had the same experience oh no dude i was just i was really fucking weird and i was like really pale and like uh dude i I was like in fifth grade thinking about killing myself just because like dude i had like two friends and like people yeah. just I got bullied so fucking much, and there was kids that got bullied more than me. I bullied some fucking kids. Just kids it, are it, shits, it man. man, shit hurts, and you're just like, okay, well, I guess yeah. this is how we do this, you know. And kids are the most ignorant, groomed areas, and they're sometimes the most. And I, I've worked for high schools. I've yeah. done. I've taught. I'm an educator. I'm an educator, and I love to educate kids. I love to teach them because kids can be assholes because kids are ignorant. Kids don't know about other people yeah kids are very insular focused empathy. they're very self-focused they haven't learned natural. empathy yeah you have to teach empathy and that's why i get my really joy of being an educator is i get to teach kids empathy that yeah you know what uh one of my i teach history so i talk about a lot about like world war ii yeah. and i get to teach yeah america we were great and we we fought the war and we we beat the, the nazis and the fascists but also we didn't let black people uh serve in the same units as white people for a long time they were regulated to mundane awful jobs like driving trucks the british kill like forced a gay man to be chemically castrated just alan because turing. he was gay alan turing and he's also the, one of the biggest reasons why we won the war, because he cracked the German cipher. Also, didn't he, like, help with the interwebs? Yeah, well, sort of. He helped with, like, computers, like, some of the first computers. Uh, and it, it's, it's interesting to see the kids be like, America, fuck yeah, and then they learn, oh, God, no, yeah. what the fuck? Got some skeletons. And, and then they start to learn that, wow, A, America has its problems, and America isn't this great golden society, and it never has been. Uh, um, I, I will say there are some things that we do well uh, and there's oh yeah of course uh, but um, I think the man that we're getting really off topic but I think <laughs> I, I think <laughs> what we're, we're talking about I, well, yeah. I think it's really relevant in terms of just society because what we're talking about is a group that kind of transcends all the normal fucking fighting because you you're just for oh, automatically sorry. friends yeah and uh, I think that's why it's so special I think uh, especially with, I I'm gonna challenge you maybe someone's got something to say about this but you know, like, uh, we have all had the dude experience. You grew up in a, a high school, like, and it's just that homophobia shit, that locker room, faggots, 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 oh, you're a faggot. And uh, I think, dude, I was still calling people faggots when I was, like, 20. And I got down, and I just kind of, like, through college, I, I met a lot of gay people, and they were my friends. And it took me a long time to really break myself of it. And then, like, almost to, like, uh, to pay for my sins of just... Just not just being that kind of asshole. I think that the Nerf community almost has that just kind of, like... Uh, we don't really want to be a part of that yeah. that that homophobia that's just like cuz it's a it's predominantly male with nerf it's kind of a like it's a bro it's it's a bro thing and uh, i think with typical men it's oh yeah i i don't dude if my friends do that it's just so easy to just be like i oh, fag like just fucking quit you know yeah i got oh, wow. i got called gay and fag when i was in school and i i'm quite straight so it was you know but it, it damaged my like self esteem yeah. a lot and now and, and this is before uh, a lot uh, this is back in like 2007 you know mm -hmm. and this is before like the LGBTQ rights really got rolling oh, in the yeah. mainstream the media and so you know it was common you know oh you're a faggot you're gay yeah, absolutely so. and you know 
I, I, I was guilty of using the same fucking language when I got into, into school. Did. And, you know, uh, I'm sure there's probably videos of me, oh, you're a faggot, whatever. Uh, and, like, I met, like, people, like, our one of our roommates and, like, a bunch Your of other girlfriend. people in the Nerf. <laughs> and I, I learned that, hey, that yeah, that language doesn't hurt, you know, the dude you're talking to's feelings that much. And it, it might sting a little bit. It does when you happen every day. But that person across the road who can hear you and yeah. they're having their own troubles coming out of the closet or whatever, they're not, you're hurting them. Yeah. And, you know, what the fuck? You're kind of an asshole for doing that. Even though that language doesn't hurt you and it might not hurt your friend, if it's hurting someone else, then don't fucking do it, you know? I think, like, I think gay is, like, the clearest example of kind of the flag that we all kind of fly behind. Yep. Of just, That's, like... Yeah. Y'all are fucking dicks, and like the counter, not a counterpoint, just a side, kind of sidebar. You know, I wear uh, girls' clothes every once in a while. Like when we play Nerf, I've got leopard pants, and I've yeah. got Sammy's got funny shorts on, and I'm I'm six four, I'm a big dude, I got a beard. Uh, and <laughs> up until uh, this last Oklahoma State University uh, Invitational, I had never had anyone yell faggot at me or gay because I'm I'm big and intimidating, and it's it's at that point of like I'm not the low hanging fruit, and we were walking around campus uh i was filming with my live stream and someone yelled faggots and i uh, i was like dude because from we're from missouri i see almost missouri and oklahoma is like the same kind of thing in terms of like same culture yeah same we're, we're flyover states and there's some racism and some homophobia like i almost just was like i was i was surprised and uh, <laughs> that's why i do it is because you see a dude walking around with a giant beard and pink pants on like I mean, maybe that just slows you down from being an asshole next time I mean, it's it's abstract but that blew me away that it took two years of me wearing girl clothes playing Nerf or just for someone to call me a faggot. And, it, it and was that's, a, that's just showing our community, you know? It's like a strong point of our community as we are generally. I mean, we're kind of dicks to each other. We're never, like, hurtful. and We try not to hurt anybody who's around us. And so the fact that you never got called, like, a pejorative like that is impressive, but not completely... Wholly surprising. Wholly yeah. surprising because yeah. our community... We're, we're, we're a little toxic, but not Family. for that reason. People, people look at me like, uh, I, I found with white people, and uh, we need to get back on the nerf in a minute. <laughs> I found with white people. White people are real quick to just kind of like look at you through their glasses or film your, and they don't say anything about it. I found with black people, they're just like, hey man, what's up? Why are you wearing leopard pants? <laughs> and it's and it looks like, like it's over with, but white people are just like, they're, um, they're sneaky. They're sneaky about their judging shit. And uh, I think that's what a lot's going on. Because I, you know, I look through my sunglasses and stuff, and everyone's checking me out. Uh, dude, the girls are the, the coolest about it because they see your weird pants or whatever. Maybe they think I'm gay, but it's... I don't know, man. There's just I something... I have those same pants in that closet. It's the, the, <laughs> I feel like this battle of just like the, the, the gay thing and just the accepting is It's one in little battles like this. It's my like favorite just, part of, of LAS, man. Yeah. Yeah. Converting to do e even Tony, man. Like Tony used to be kind of like a little bit, just kind of like, ah, oh, you shouldn't say that. And dude, just some of the stuff he posts now is just like it's vigilant about. It. Dude, you don't get to talk to people. You don't. You don't get to be that hateful. Progress. Yeah. And uh, that changing Tiny your battles. friend, man. Tiny fights. That's yeah, how like, the world changes. Not every white guy back in 1967. Yeah. All right. Just, I want to jump back to to Darren and get some more Darren. Jerry's final thoughts, because I think we're all hungry. <laughs> I just I want to hear. Uh, I want two things. I want to hear what you think's gonna happen in the next five years of Nerf. Where do you think Nerf HVZ will be in five to ten years? And uh, where think, do you think you'll be? Like, where where do you think the road that you're choosing to go to Oregon is gonna lead you? I think that Nerf in five years, or at least HVZ Nerf, uh, it will have either fizzled down a whole lot, or it's gonna have a resurgence. One of the two. Uh, we're seeing a lot of like decreased numbers, and I we've been trying to fix it for a while. Um, What's holding us back? Man, uh, I'm not sure. I think that we're either too complex, like, like we're, we're running games for ourselves and we're just not recruiting hard enough, or uh, man, I, I'm, not, I'm not sure. Uh, I started focusing on kids, man. Just yeah. kind of like... We're recruiting, really. We, yeah. uh, you can't change 25-year-olds. Again, again with the tired. clicky. You know, yeah. we're, we're, we're a little bit too satisfied playing with our friends, and our friends start graduating, and our numbers dwindle and dwindle and dwindle and dwindle. We're not getting new faces. That's the biggest thing. Uh, this like, past boy. semester was really good, though. We got a lot of new zombies. Yeah, I mean, we're trying to do that this semester. I'm modding again uh, for the umpteenth time. Uh, and a big focus of our game this year is, yeah, we like these really funny themes. Like, Gotham's great. And, like, Gotham's you know, best. Doctor Who's amazing and uh, Narnia and all that shit. But, yeah, it's not recruiting. I mean, it's too niche. We need to stop making games for ourselves and start making games for the campus yep. and get people in the campus interested. Sammy's already going to play HVZ. We don't need to recruit him. He's already going to be there with a super strife. 
Okay, we need to get Joe Schmo, freshman. We need to get freshman yeah. psychology major over there and get them interested. Yeah, because we like getting Sammy or you or Darren to play is not particularly hard. I think uh, in me with food. something I'm kind of even having to just kind of acknowledge of, uh, dude, I, I want to spread this shit. I want to do all these great things. And I really felt like it was, oh, my quest was on my shoulder for a long time. And I really, uh, now I'm getting to the point where I think even with LAS, like Darren leaving is kind of the end of an era. And there's a couple people like Sammy who's been around, uh, but a lot of the old folks are gone. The people yeah. who started the organization, there's Drawing a couple. We're going the uh, way of the dodo, man. But I think the answer to that is to not be like, okay, we need to leave a book of rules. We almost need to hand off something simpler so it can be something else. And yeah, maybe kind of like be there to answer questions and stuff, but hand off something that's less encumbered by all the bullshit that's happened. Like. Get away from the drama. That's why I'm stepping yep. away from LAS. Is uh, man, I don't I don't know a lot of these kids, and that's okay. Like uh, th it's okay to be hands off too. That's a, that's an important yeah. thing. Like I, me and Janine talked about this a lot this past game. Janine was uh, a little bit too hands on, even though she wasn't modding, and it stressed her out and it made her not have any fun. And yeah. I have absolutely had that experience. It, uh, yeah, it's you common. mod you mod a game, you mod two games, and then you're just a little bit too critical sometimes. Yeah. You I think have, it's up to you to make it fun, but all you gotta do is just is have fun. Put the chessboard yeah. on the and table. And I, I, I learned that lesson, nobody really got to teach it to me. Yeah. Uh, it's a hard one to learn. Yeah, and it's a lot better. Like I know how to have fun at a game now and not like worry about it going right. Yeah, I'm still learning the process of not. Yeah, you too are. It, it's rough. You know? <laughs> I, I, I'm not. I wouldn't say temperamental, but I'm a very critical person. I've yeah. ran a lot of games. I've played a lot of games. You've grown so much over years, man. Like I, I'm I, so I proud still have a problem. You know, I still am pretty critical of people, but I also understand that hey, I'm not always right, and I never will be always right. But I've also understood the point where I need to not be. I don't necessarily need to run a game. But I like with our mod council this semester. We have a lot of new faces. We have Sam Sam Edwards, Andrew Sikarski, all these new people. Yeah. Some guy, some person I've never even met yeah. before. Guy? <laughs> some guy, yeah. and he's great. He has a lot of ideas, and I, I don't want. To, and I'm not even head mod. I, Sam is, yeah, yeah. and he's only modded once before, I think, mm -hmm. and yeah. twice, twice. Um, he's a new face though. Like really, yeah, when we started building Thunderdome 2.0, like I never even met the guy, and then he's just like jumped in, and he he's a why not kind of guy. He showed up. I uh, I, I I kind of adopted him. What yeah. happened is uh, <laughs> it was great. I remember Ash the day you talked Ashley about and I, uh, Ashley and I uh, got kind of separated from the main human group. Yeah. And this guy was with me. I'm like, hey, guess what? You're my best friend. It was like now. Squid Squad or something. Yeah, it was, it was during Squid Squad uh, era, and uh, like I needed this dude to like come through for me, and he did during yeah. the game. And then I'm like, by the way, you've been adopted. yeah. And we we played with. Him during and, the dark yeah, zone, so, it was fun. and then uh, Thunderdome was happening. And I was like, "Hey, you look crafty. You want to come and help this dude that you've never met?" And then, <laughs> And then, and then just, we learned yeah. he's just a mini Darren. Yeah, he's, but he's essentially. You no, know, he's with, got a little camera in him too. He doesn't. Oh, have, yeah. he he's doesn't got have that, an asshole, but that cambo, love the, camera, that but. cambo of personality. But he's like, I don't, I don't want to be a, a mod. I don't want to be the head mod, but I want to be there as a mod. Solid to, number two. To, to stay there and be like, look, guys, this is what you can't do, and not because I think your idea is dumb, yeah. but because I think it's a not going to work because you're playing you're making a game for yourselves and you don't need to do that and also campus security and campus is going to breathe down your neck if you do yeah. this so and that's kind of what i want to do with this game around this is probably going to be the last time i ever mod yeah uh I, I, I am a timing and b i'm going off to suit in thailand yeah. soon so the, right, thing, the thing i prove real quick the thing i've uh t the role i've played with uh, with sam is like Basically, he knows where I've talked to him about a lot of this stuff, but I, I basically said, hey, I'm here if you want to ask, ask any questions. I got a lot of ideas. Not all of them are right, but uh, if you need to know about a certain thing in HVZ, I'm totally down to talk about it. Um, and he, he's just asking questions, and it's like, even just stuff that we all kind of like assume that's why it's like that. Like, uh, they're just coming up with new fucking ideas. Yeah, and a lot just... of them are crazy and awesome. We've, we've came up, we've always had a problem with special infected in our games, yeah. right? And we've all, we've relied on the same few. We made some changes and we've gotten, we, we, we felt pretty comfortable. And then we did that for the same two semesters. Like, well, we're kind of bored of that. Let's think of something. And it's always been a struggle to come up with a balanced special infected. I think when we had our last meeting, the first meeting we ever had, we came up with seven new special infected, and all of them seem legit. We're not going to put seven special yeah. infected in our game. But it, like, it's new promise. ideas, though. Like, but they're brand new ideas. Yeah. Stuff we would never would have thought. Of. We thought of stuff from like Bioshock. Like, That's great. What? Like, like Vince, when is Bioshock a zombie game? The Spicers don't count. But you know, like it's crazy where we these new guys are pulling ideas and we're still resting on our laurels of Resident Evil. And, oh, and Halo. Uh, you know? Like we're still playing Team Slayer stuff like that, and uh. Yeah. Uh, you know, actually, we're getting away from that a little bit in the LES events, which is cool. 
We we play new games like yeah, yeah I, hate, I hate Spartans. It's, it's I mean, yeah, I hate it because it it's downtime. I, the thing I like is what Thunderdome. It's just like you're back in the action. You're cool, and it's multi-medics. That's why it's the we best. We haven't played game. Spartans in a while. We played a little bit of Spartans, but it was like three card Spartans, which was fun as fuck. I think Spartans in a garage would be great. Uh, it's just, <laughs> we were kind of confined to a garage. Sort of garage like area. I think the survivalism almost kind of kills Spartans, where you're just like, yeah. if you run in, that's how it's supposed to be played, but if you do it the right we way. We run in and we stop. Then like you, wait for, <laughs> you wait for five minutes. All yeah. right. Okay, so the second part of the question was Oregon land. Yes. Um, so five years in Oregon. A, I hope to be done with school. By so then. You, your master's, like, how long is that program? Uh, two to four years, but I'm also probably going to get a P dub. So what does that mean? PhD. PhD. Okay. Uh, Probably at OSU because they have a PhD program. So I gotta wait five years for you and your pretty hair to come back. Uh, maybe. All right. I'm or you can come and see me. We'll touch beards. Yeah, I'm hoping no. I'm not gonna be poor. That's why I'm selling this house. I feel you. Uh, but I mean, like while I'm there, I plan to get into a whole bunch of new hobbies and do my school stuff and meet a lot of people. Yeah, talk I about mean, some of your hobbies, man. Yeah. Uh, so Oregon is a wealth of like natural landscape and awesomeness uh so i haven't i haven't hunted or fished in five years and i live in missouri college kind of ate it up you know uh are you burnt out on nerf at all because me and sammy both kind of hit a point and i think really it was thunderdome that kind of sucked the laugh i am i am a little bit out of like, like a little bit burnt out on uh uh our nerf you know i'm i'm hoping that a change of scenery and like like i said earlier with the whole afterworlds thing uh like Oregon Nerf is gonna be like way different because oh yeah, LARP. Like, they do LARPy stuff and I'm 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 game for that. Uh, Dude, even like eight years or uh, six years ago at Missouri State when they had armor, that was a drastically different fucking game. Yeah, mm -hmm. that, and, and and yeah, that's that's a major component of Afterworlds. You know, you have armor and hit points, and I'm excited to, to do that. I like uh, I like min maxing a little bit. John knows. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I like I like games where there's a bunch going on and you have to account for all of it at the same time while you're running hollering and trying to murder people at the same time like like first person shooters with like a bunch of different kinds of classes like i i'm into that i grew so, up on contra man that's why i, I want to yeah. run i want to shoot i want to yeah. like don't bo don't bore me with the fucking story just say no, congratulations i want, I want, when like, it's done, you I know? want 30 different kinds of enemies trying to kill me uh. in 30 different kinds of way all <laughs> while i'm like managing a thing on the side yeah no i'm totally into it I, i've got adhd brain too but it helps all right darren i got one question for you what up fam for as long as you've been here in Springfield, what is like one of your top favorite memories here? Ooh, that's hard. Top favorite memories in Springfield. Or just like in, in the group with us. Well, I, I would even open it up like if it's so, something really crazy, but like man, so much of your life is nerfed. That's yeah. that's why I'm like giving myself the opportunity to leave it is because it's just, it's so all encompassing. Yeah, all right, so my favorite recent memory, I'll go with that. Uh, this was unfortunately a day that Rob wasn't there. Um, so the Dark Zone was a lot of fun when we did it. Uh, for those of you who don't know, it, Dark Zone was just like this after late late night HVZ. It was really great when we did it. Uh, it's it's dropping the ball right now. Uh, survivalism goes into it and a bunch of other shit. So, but what happened is like we go to this Dark Zone and like it busts. Like everybody immediately runs away and shit. But then it just turns into like kind of a battle royale where just like people are there having fun with each other. Oh, was uh, this the last one? It was the last one. Uh, we bought Sam uh, or somebody. Sam bought somebody a birthday cake because uh, it was like their birthday or like almost their birthday. He was a real adult then, and it was it was really cool. Just like um, everybody like put aside HBZ for a moment to just like be friends, and that that to me like that would have never happened like even even a year ago maybe like maybe two years ago. Yeah, we played Ring of Death, which is something that we blatantly stole from uh, Oklahoma. Um, and, you know, and, and my I, problem with that is the fact that, like, I think my past experience with, man, we need to have a party, we need to do Thunderdome. Yeah. Like, that shit's even, like, the new people should be free to do whatever they fucking want. And, yeah. like, even though I see there as being a problem because I think the mission should be strong enough, yeah. then that's, that's, it doesn't really matter what I it, think. And, and, and like, I'm, I'm not even, like, talking about that. I'm just talking about this great experience of, like, everybody. It was, a, it was like, 30 to 50 people. People dressed in yeah. dumb makeup and I was in the toga and yeah like Darren people, was in a stupid hat and put everything aside in the theme of fun <laughs> and I, I I've been gunning for that for so fucking long and I felt yeah. like it was the success of like my last year here and it, it was it was good like it was when I realized I need to get the fuck out of the way though and just yeah. let them do what they want you know what I mean like find I their own happy that fun too just cool 
Mm -hmm. Ashley was like a big part of Ashley that. Was, Ashley had fun, guys. Ashley yeah. Morgan had fun. What? For the three people who actually <laughs> made it this far, um, I want to talk about Ashley a little bit because it's kind of this elephant in the room of Missouri State. And Ashley, the, bro. <laughs> the only reason I'm talking about Ashley is because I feel like Ashley kind of represents a lot of the HVZ player. In our, like, we all have a little bit of Ashley in us. Ashley's very good at Nerf. Uh, she was kind of into sports and stuff. And when she first started playing, like, the first, <laughs> well, first, first time she played, she was like, she got turned into a zombie and she was a pretty good zombie. You know, she ran around and she played her heart out. And then at some point in time, like, uh, she decided she wanted, she was really good at it and she focused on getting better. That kind of like that athlete in her. And then, over time, like, um, I think we all saw it. This has been kind of like a dramatic thing of like, you kind of saw Ashley just getting a little bit more upset about it and just like um, really focusing on um, her survival, defining her as a person, not necessarily like her fun experience. And it honestly looked like Ashley was having less fun. Uh, and a lot of people got really upset because uh, the, the thing in Missouri State is when you get to that point where you start to like try and be good at nerf you start kind of like uh questioning tags and just debating and you kind of get into this you, you forget that you're supposed to be having fun and the only person you're kind of in my opinion is you're stealing you're stealing your own fun by trying to be good at it and so but i want to say uh, uh she like like all, all that you're saying is like true like there was kind of a, like a hump but like Right now, like the Ashley that we just had, yeah. Ashley right now was great, fun as fuck. dude. Yeah, that like was she didn't dude. get into an argument, which is amazing. Yeah, like, she, we did not I, fight I, at all. I, I, awesome. I think, I think that she kind of felt some of the the, the community push, and she was like. And she adjusted. Maybe, maybe I do or... have a problem. She's she's a lot of personal fucking maybe, growth, and that's what like, I'm acknowledging. It, either way, wherever it come from, like, she's doing better. Like like, like or even if she's like the same. Like the community is more okay with it, and at, at the end of the day, she's having more fun. I, I, uh, when she came in last time, I put a bounty on her. Yeah, uh, she did. Because you know, Ashley and I, a little bit of history, not a problem. Still friends. We're growing up. We're living together uh, for the weekend at Inmore. Uh, got a house, and but I put a bounty on her. I, I had a flintlock that I had won an HEZ with. I carried around six flintlocks, uh, really bad Busby ones. Like they shoot like 15 feet. Uh, but I had spray painted it gold and like clear coated it and made it made it real nice, right? Uh, and I said whoever could tag Ashley and Morgan would get this yeah. golden flintlock. And she was completely fine with it. She was, she was she like, was that's perfect. amazing. It's a great yeah. idea. That's yeah, all I ask of people. I don't ask for you to be perfect. I ask for you to be a little bit better of a person to be working on yourself. And I find myself like people who aren't She's working on themselves, dude, yeah. they're not worth hanging out with because they're not, they're not becoming a better person. And I want to be a better person. She, so. she is as much about having fun as she is about winning you know? yeah and that is a great change and yeah. i really enjoy the ashley that we see playing now. she she we hasn't all, been upset about a tag in a while we so. all got we're at that point of like where we wanted to be good at nerf because you're like oh it's fun and you you yeah. progress just like anything else i just want to say part of the clickiness made that toxic environment oh little, dude, yeah, yeah why i bring it up too is because like dude it's it's Ashley graduated, and then there's still cancer of her like coming back like people were there was drama about we're it people who had about, never yeah. even met ashley were bitching about her mm -hmm. and uh Man, like that's that's the shit. Like even like me, like I've caused drama. You know what I mean? With with just <laughs> I think we all like, have. I, I have influenced nah, the Springfield nerf culture. <laughs> I've tried not to. Yeah, Sammy's. You're Sammy's pretty. Too. You're pretty damn chill. You know, but like I think uh, I think it's okay to move on. But I think it's also okay to come back. And I, I think we all see how Ashley was treated. And we're just like y'all may not agree with this shit, but like don't it, be dicks. Don't if she can't come back, then we can't come back. That, you know? Yeah, yeah. She was she got the short end of the stick a lot. You know, and I. Everybody kind of recognized that and like are chill with her now. Yeah. Like, you know what we're gonna have to do? Every bit of homophobia and all like the shit that we just kind of attacked at. Man, we need to do that with just this infighting and this drama and stuff. And I think like infighting's at an all-time low. I think low. LAS as a whole it's right great. now is Darren's right. Yeah. Infighting and clickiness and drama is an all-time so low. Online too, though, man. Like I yeah, think the person... online shit gets in gets pretty crazy, and I, I've been a part of it recently, and would do, like to. Do you know not why that, that shit happens online? Because you don't nerf with people. You yeah. don't yeah. get the benefit of. I've never just... shot these people in, yeah. in the face, and they got pissed off at a meme that I made, and it's like, well, I didn't like <laughs> mean to like. This is not what I wanted. I just wanted to fuck around, you know. Yeah. And it's because I've never never shot these people in the face before and they never shot, never shot me in the face and that was cool to meet Fujio wasn't it man like just Fugio like great, I bro. interacted with him so much on Nerf Myers Welcome or on uh, uh, Nerfers Welcome or whatever it is and uh I don't know, man. Fujio just always seemed like this super chill fucking dude, and he was yeah. always like really He's funny. So goofy. And Fugio you meet him in person, best. and like, dude, I was friends with him in like in 30 seconds, and I didn't even really have yeah. the energy to be friends with anyone. I met Fujio once, and then he rode in the back of my truck across Springfield. Yeah. Like, and then he slept at my house. And then he slept like at his house week. for a week. The first experience I had with Fujio, like, we were starting at NVZ, and he didn't have a group, and he just joined our group with me, Chase, uh, Colton, 
And Wilson, and he's just, hey, can I run a guess? I'm like, sure, come on. And he was, he's great people. He's a good human being. And I think that could be said for all of the nerd community, really. I mean, we got our assholes, and we got our dicks, and we got our fucking ass, like, whatever. You know what? And we you got, know what we're fixing it? They're just people. And we're a lot of it. Walk on them and drag. You know how you fix that relationship? You have them fucking play together. You have them go, just... have, go have a beer, and then go fire some Nerf guns at each other, and you solve the fucking problem. Yeah. That was the best part of Thunderdome. Getting really drunk get, and playing get a lot. Drunk, yeah, Thunderdome was a drink okay. Like, and it's... then, ooh, the aftermath of that was never Dude, I really like it with the kids, though, man. Like, the kids, yeah. once, like, there, there was something different that it was, like, Oh, yeah. It didn't feel like... Let Shelby yeah. and Sam go fucking crazy. They're completely sober, and us and us old assholes are just, like, yeah. sitting on the porch, like, Yeah, yeah you got them. It worked for all of us, though. You could be literally shit-faced. Not shit-faced, but... Uh, and it's just like you could be drunk as you want and sober and just like it worked man and it was yep. just cool you know and like because I think as soon as anyone started to be an asshole you're just like hey that's not okay regardless of you're drunk or not you oh, know yeah I have a lot of half naked photos of me from Thunderdome like pinching corn sick I have a lot of half naked photos of Rob from Thunderdome it's you true. guys uh so you guys know that like uh, I've got Jack from Thunderdome Nova Scotia yeah. coming staying for like I'm a month so and I'm so excited I want to go shooting with you guys so now bad Ryan's coming Ryan's, those, Ryan's I'm getting I want, you, I want to I uh seduce Ryan from Make This Battle he's coming to stay for like a week dude we're gonna just Ooh, do a seducing. flow trip and we're gonna go shoot guns and we're gonna blow up uh Centurions with Tannerite <laughs> go camp at Thunder Ranch play some airsoft so man I'm this is like the time I, I hate that you're fucking leaving because like, yeah, you can I'm just to a little down too. Yeah. I, I can learn about trees and be Darren 2.0. I'll try. No, yeah. I'm just gonna like sell a testicle and just get you a we plane can put, ticket. <laughs> I mean, we could tape my head and put my hair on you. You could be Darren 2.0. I always think when I watch Make This Battle, it's like, um, Ryan is Australian Cameron and Justin is Australian Rob because he's like the editor and Ryan's very much into kind of like the engineering and I like I, I feel oh, like just a wallaby. I, I want to draw another point of like um dude even like I think what's so cool about meeting other nerfers in other places like there's kind of almost a Darren at OSU and there's almost a Darren at probably uh, like Nico. everywhere yeah yeah like <laughs> and you meet these people and you're almost just like man you remind me of Cameron like and so well, you you instantly like, kind of get like his Drax take on Earth. chicken. Yeah, like, well, Draken... Nico because, reminds me of you. Nico yeah. Perez is just short Darren. Yeah, he, he was Cameron for me. But even, like, you almost have, like, the, the code book for the person when you meet him because it reminds you you're an for buddy back in... The, like, there's some people who really like the modding and some people who really like the fun. Some people who really like the drinking. And we just have the cipher already ready to go. And uh, I'm just looking forward to meeting, like, all the other and more, like, Cincinnati Darren, you know? <laughs> yeah, I, I, I want to meet Cincinnati Darren. I think it'd be fun. I want to meet Ohio Darren. <laughs> All right. Um, cool. I want to do one thing real quick, and then if you guys want to keep going, we can we can go eat. But I want to make sure I get this. I'm hungry. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna start out. We'll go in reverse order. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna start with Sammy. Sammy, I love you, brother. Uh, once you moved in, man, my life just kind of turned up like that cat. And then you and just being like, man, this is just like you changed my fucking life. And just because you just said, hey, I'm gonna show up to Thunderdome and I'm gonna sweat my ass off, and, uh, and my life is awesome because of you. And I really appreciate the fuck out of you, brother. Even if your dog shits and, <laughs> and pisses on my back. I, I love you, man. And, uh, dude, I'm... Love you too, man. Even, like, two years ago, we weren't even this close. Like, I liked you a lot, but, like, dude, you're a brother now. You're absolutely family to me. John, over the years, uh, dude, like, the, your fucking personal growth is amazing. Like, um, and I think that's a testament to Nerf, too, and even, like, your teaching and stuff. Like, I remember, like, I see early videos, and it's even just, like, public speaking. It's really, like, uh... You're really fucking good at articulating now, and you're just like confident. Like, yeah, we're sitting on the fucking porch, but dude, you can do this in front of 20, 30 people now. Yeah. And I don't uh, think five years ago, John could have done that, you know? Yeah. I'm I don't just, think I could have. I definitely could have. Couldn't I, have. I'm impressed with the person you're becoming, and I'm excited to see what else you do. And your girl's all right, too. She's cool. She's pretty cool. Thanks, Rob. Maybe all right, Darren. Uh, I can't even fucking deal with this, you leaving shit. Like, uh,. I, I just I, I'm in fucking denial in the same way I was in denial of camera but I just I was at a point where it's too stressed to even I think that's why we were fighting because we were both still how, how, do you, how you deal with it? it's almost like it's like you're dying like really like in terms of like I'm trying to focus on the people who live around me and I've really stopped putting uh, focus on people who live in different states and people yeah. online and uh, I put my focus on Sammy I put my focus on my cat and uh, <laughs> I think that's uh, I think that's the right way to live and I think that's why Nerf is good because you have that face to face and but the fact that that also means like when Darren goes to Oregon, a little bit of uh, Darren dies in me, and uh, uh, there's no words I can fucking express just how shittier my life is gonna be because of you. It'll be all right. Uh, I mean, maybe I'll find Darren 2.0, kind of like Cameron and Sam Edwards, like Cameron 2.0. But uh, in the same regard of like, man, 
the shit, the road we walked down with Cameron and just like, uh, it changed his fucking path now uh, where he kind of saw that, you know, in a backyard he could build whatever the fuck he wanted. And uh, he applied that to his life and said, I can do whatever I want. And he did it. And I, in that regard, like, it's okay that Cameron's gone because, man, he's chasing his dreams. And I know you're fucking doing it too, man. And I, I, I hope you find what you're looking for. And if uh, you get to that place and it's not making you happy, I hope you change that fucking dream quick. Absolutely. And I love you, buddy. Uh, I'm just, You guys want to keep going? You, you. I want you to give you, Jerry, you guys can have Jerry's final thoughts, but I, I appreciate all of you, you know? Oh, well, thank you, and I love you too, man. <laughs> Your hair's so pretty. Thanks, <laughs> yeah, man. I mean, you, you look like handsome. I think all of our lives have been bettered by this asshole coming into him. You know, I, I've lived with him for a year. Uh, we learned a lot about each other. We argue a lot. I argued a lot, man. Two humanities majors in the same fucking house. There's a lot of fucking argument. <laughs> fuck your slightly different perspective. Yeah, fuck you too. Uh, but, you know, I think, I think Nerf as a whole will get better, and wherever you go, you're going to make it better. I think if you, if, you were, if you want it to be better, it will be better. If you want to, like, keep spreading the cancer, keep talking about the fucking people you don't like in your group, dude, talk to the new people. Like, yep. focus on the new people. because going to the new people again. It's going to be great. I'm excited. Focus on the pe focus on meat space, not my space. <laughs> All right, Sammy, that what you got? 2004. I mean, it's been a long road, Darren. Like, when I first got here, we didn't really counteract with each other very very often. Yeah, we knew each other. That's how me and Sammy were too, though. It's just like yeah, we, we we knew of each other's existence, but like as the road progressed on and as we we, we gained closer, it's like like how Rob portrayed me. Like, it's not you're you're not just a friend, you're family, man. It's like how I said the other day when you're trying to con me to come eat or come uh, help you move and like hey, you didn't need to con me with like fucking shit and you're like oh, <laughs> if you need help man your family I'm gonna help you out I'll, you. I'll bust my ass for you for any day same thing with John it doesn't matter who you are glad I'm not moving hopefully people made of people brother and uh, I think when we stop being assholes to each other and see the similarities rather than focus on these stupid ass differences that don't mean shit that's the world I want to live in and uh, I, I think we're all with nerf on our best days, moving closer to that. All right, enough of the sappy shit. Let's go eat some Thai Express. Right, hungry. All right, I want to see some Thai food. This has been Real Talk on the Porch with the Elf, the Prak, the Sammy, and the Beard. <laughs> Bye.